So let's say OpenSea's lab is a, basically a tool that's been under developed by a number of different developers. Um, it's basically we're, we're putting all these sort of the OpenSea's um, applications on the hub, kind of one central location. Um, basically, the OpenSea's lab is basically a, tool, a suite of tools within a tool. Um, they're basically for submitting OpenSea scripts to NISUB. And there's also little tools in there for hopefully educating students and professors about structural engineering um, and also practicing engineers. So the thing to do is when you launch the OpenSeas Lab tool, um, feel free to do so while I'm talking. This is basically the screen you're going to see. Um, as I say, it's a tool within a tool. And to select the individual tools, it's just you, you use that drop down menu at the top. Um, you, you press the menu and you get a number of options. Um, the first option is the OpenSeas interpreter tool. So here, you, when you start this thing, you'll basically start OpenSeas, the interpreter, running in the hub. Um, so you can start again typing the commands that we've been showing you all day long on the hub. If you've got a, some files that you just downloaded with Gamez, if you can CD into that directory and type source the file name, it's similar to batch submit. It's going to execute the, um, the commands in that script. So this is just another way to, to execute those commands other than through batch submit. OK? So there are some examples of some things I'm doing. So another tool is this parallel script submission tool. If you have a job that you want to run in a parallel machine, either the local machine that Gamez was showing you, um, the Purdue machines, which I believe is Steele or Hansen, and also Ranger. This is the tool you can use. Um, it's a very simple interface. All you have to specify is where is my main script? Where is that main script that MP is going to run on? Or SP is going to run? So that's what goes in the first line. Basically, you specify the full path to your main script. After you've specified that, you just specify which resource you're going to use. Are you going to use Ranger, the local, local Nice machine, or are you going to use Steeler Hansen? So you sp specify which machine you want to use. Um, and then for each machine, a little thing is going to pop up and specify the different options you have for that particular machine. They're basically um, very similar. You have to specify whether you want to use what's called OpenSeas MP or OpenSeas SP. It's one of the two parallel applications. I'm going to show you them tomorrow. Then you specify the number of processors you're going to want to use. Um, so when you go to a, like a large job with a lot of, where you need lots of processing powers, you're going to use Ranger. You can go up to 4,000 processors on Ranger at the moment if you want um, to specify. And you also have to indicate how long this job is going to take to run. You need to specify what's called the wall time. Um, the wall time has to, you have to, you know, go long, never go short on the wall time because when the wall time is over, it'll give you a little bit extra and then it's just going to stop your job immediately. So you have to have a good idea of how long your job is going to take to run. So that's the OpenSeas parallel submission. Again, you select the tool and then you select the application. We're going to talk about more about these applications tomorrow. There are two parallel applications. OpenSeas SP and OpenSeas MP. Um, SP is for basically large models. MP is for large models and parameter studies. When you run the tool, as Gomez was saying, this, this tool is actually using batch submit at the back end um, for you. We're just making batch submit easier to run so you don't have to issue the whole command. What this tool does is it does that same command that you're just, you've just been issued in issuing in batch command or in batch submit, it just, it just hides it all from you. So it's, again, it's just in batch submit. Anybody who's having batch submit problems here today where they can't create the directory is going to have the same problem when they try and run this tool. But when the tool, when it's, that is working correctly, it's going to come back and tell you where your results are going to be found. And you'll also get an email um, from Nice saying what the job has started and when the job is finished. Okay, and then you can come back later and look at your results. And the results are going to be in this scratch directory which everybody's having problems create.
So here's a quick example of OpenSea's SP. Again, this is for large models. Typically, you just have to change one command in the file. Basically, we want to change it to a parallel solver. Um, and this is the type of performance improvements we can get. And then OpenSea's SP again, or MP again, we're going to talk about the different commands tomorrow. Um, but the savings are great. As Gomez was talking about, he's getting, you know, somebody's taking almost a year to be done in, like, in, in less than a month. Um, we can actually get better performance improvements. A lot of the time they were spending is just getting the data back um, from, from the, the other computers. So here, as I say, OpenSeed, so that's for submitting jobs. We've got the sequential submissions and the parallel submissions. Then there are other tools within this lab, basically, as I say, for educating students, professors, and practicing engineers. So they're real, they're real simple little tools that can be developed. Um, here's one on a basic lateral pile analysis. Um, basically, you apply a load P, lateral load P, at the top of a pile. It's got an L1 and an L2, an L2 length embedded into the ground, an L1 above the ground length. Um, you specify its, its section properties, whether the pro pile is fixed or pinned. And then when you're done, you just hit simulate. And you get the results. And then you can compare results for different applications. I'm not going to go too much into it. As I say, you know, just run the tool yourselves and play with it. Here's another example, um, site response tool. Um, this tool will actually be talked about tomorrow in Pe Pedro Arduino's presentation. You can play with it tonight. If you have any questions and you want to ask Pedro them about them tomorrow, you can. Um, so here's a, sort of the latest tool I've been working on. Um, it uses what's called Pegasus for actually creating scientific workflows. Because a lot of the stuff we do is, is like MATLAB, OpenSeas, MATLAB, OpenSeas. So we're doing sort of the same, the same kind of stuff on, with the same models. It's, it's called what's called a scientific workflow. Um, so OpenSeas cannot do it all. We want to talk to these other programs. So what we're using is we're using a s software called Pegasus which will take a description of the, all the work you want to do. You know, this input file goes to this program, take the output file from that program and send it somewhere else. So that's what Pegasus does, and it maps this onto what's called the open science grid. So it'll map this onto highly distributed processors. and actually does all the computation for you, does all the sending of the files from here to there, um, the sequencing of you know, which job can start and when it can start. So it all does that for you internally. Um, so this is the tool I'm using this for. It's just an example tool that they were looking for that would use this sort of scientific workflow software. Um, so this is a, what I call a simple moment frame reliability analysis tool. Um, so basically it's a steel frame model. Um, steel is a material, you know, we do not know E and we do not know FY. Um, you know, the, the properties vary. Um, in our typical simulations, we don't consider these the variation in the properties. That's what this tool is trying to show, that you know, these properties, you know, what you choose does impact what the results are going to be. So what this tool does is it uses MATLAB to generate um, sort of different values of E and FY based on what the distributions you, you actually describe, what log normal distribution you just say is for E or the FY. The ones that are built in are what's provided in that, the paper by Galambus on which the whole LRFD is based. So as I say, you can say you want to do one simulation. If you do one simulation, you get the mean result. So that's what you'd see if you just did uh, your typical finite element simulation where you specify what E and FY is for your steel material. But as I say, E and FY varies, you know, every single steel beam has different properties. Within a steel beam, Within a section, even the properties are varying. This tool only varies them um, within, you know, element to element, the properties are different. So if you do one analysis, you, you get to your single response. Um, if you did 10 simulations, you'll see the results. These are how the, say, the roof displacements vary for eight different earthquakes. Um, the 100 simulations, you go up to 1,000 simulations. You go 10,000, 100,000 simulations if you want. And you start seeing what the distributions are. So when you're thinking of a single model, you know, theoretically your your models, you know, just
Just looking at one set of results for a model, is, it's, it's basically wrong when you really think about it, given the materials that we work with. Um, you really start to have to start thinking about um, doing analysis like these um, to actually get to see how you actually, your, your buildings are going to perform. Um, this is just a little a sample tool that, that will show you, demonstrate this to you. Thank you.